If you're struggling with rotoscoping in After Effects, then watch this. In this video, you're gonna learn how to rotoscope fast and efficiently, maximizing the speed of your computer and composite flawlessly to get some great VFX results. All right, so I'm in After Effects. I'm gonna bring my clip into a new composition and let's get rolling. So I'm gonna double click on the clip and I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna make sure my Roto Brush tool is selected. And I'm gonna hit the tilde key to zoom into this panel here and I'm just gonna hold the command key now and I'm gonna make my brush size larger by moving my cursor up. To make it smaller, I move my cursor down. So I'm gonna make this a nice big size and I'm gonna get the bulk of my subject here. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller now and I'll zoom in and I'll get some of the details here like the, his hand here. And if I wanted to remove a part, all I need to do is hold the option key and you can see it turns red and I could just pick out the parts that I want to remove. So removing this part, I'll bring this part back in. So obviously the pink line here is what our roto is gonna be. And looking at his hand here, you could see it's a little bit out of focus and there's a little bit of motion blur there. So I could switch over to my refine edge tool by hitting option W again, or I could just select it from the menu here. And I'm just gonna use the refine edge tool right along the edge of the pink line here. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna soften my edge and it's gonna help out with these areas like here that there's a little crease here between his arm and his torso. It's gonna help out those areas to kind of feather it and make it less jarring to the eye when you're doing your composite. So I'll remove some more parts here and I'll go back to my main tool and I'm just gonna remove this part as well. Do you hate being on camera? You need a spokesperson for your brand but don't wanna hire one? Meet Humva AI, the AI avatar tool that creates professional spokesperson videos in minutes. You could browse tons of pre-made avatars ready for any content. Sales videos, product reviews, testimonials, and more. You want something unique? Upload one photo and create your own avatar. Choose from a variety of styles and backgrounds and either upload a custom voice or select one of the smart match voices or even choose cartoon style for a fun dynamic touch. No experience? No problem. Just type in your script and let Humva do the rest. Why spend hundreds or even thousands on spokespersons when Humva delivers instant, affordable results? Create stunning AI avatar videos today. No cameras, no recording, just results. Check the link in the description below. The first thousand users can use Humva code at checkout to get the first month free. Head to Humva.com now. And switching back and forth using option W helps a lot. So you can kind of speed through this process a lot quicker using the rotor brush and the refine edge tool. You can go section by section, removing parts and adding parts. So it's really helpful using these shortcuts. So I'm just gonna keep plugging away here. I'm just making sure that I gather every detail on my first frame and getting my first frame perfect so when I actually move forward in the timeline, it actually helps the algorithm pick up what it needs to pick up for the roto. And I'll speed this up for you. So once I have a good roto, I can go down to my alpha overlay here and I can kind of see what it looks like. So you see if there's any hard edges that I wanna fix. Like if I wanted to fix this area right here, I can go back to my other view and I could go ahead and just tweak this using the refine edge tool. I like using the red alpha overlay and you can kind of adjust the opacity down here to kind of see what you're working with, bring it back down if you need to. And so once you start to preview your roto, you could see how well of a job it actually did. So this is looking pretty good. So there's a little part here that I like to remove. I'm gonna make a really small brush and I'm gonna hit the option key and try to remove that if I can. See what that does, that looks pretty good. There you go. So skipping ahead here, what I'm gonna do to make my After Effects run a little bit smoother is I'm gonna actually pre-render this on an alpha channel. So I have my clip here in my composition. I'm still gonna keep this here, but I'm actually just gonna pre-render this by going to composition, pre-render. And down here in my settings, I'm gonna make sure it's either high quality with alpha or lossless with alpha. I'm gonna go with lossless, it's a little bit higher quality and I'll render that out. And once that renders out, I'm gonna just hide this main one in my sequence here and I'm gonna import my rendered out version. And I'll bring that into my composition and you see how much quicker it moves. It's because it's actually a video file and not a roto file that it has to keep propagating. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring my main layer back underneath and I'll solo that layer and right clicking with that layer selected, I'll go to track and stabilize, track camera. And this is gonna create a 3D camera tracker for my scene because it's kind of a handheld shot and I wanna make sure whatever I composite in there is gonna maintain that same camera movement. So while that's going, I have a couple things I wanna use here on Sketchfab. I'll drop these links down below. This one is actually just a abandoned house 3D render. And this other one here is a really cool phone booth with some overgrown vines all around it. It's gonna blend in very well with my scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and download both of those as GLB files. So now while this is still going, I'll import those two GLB files that I downloaded into my project. And I'll bring the first one into my composition here. After Effects is going to actually switch the renderer to advanced 3D render once I bring this in. So I could rotate this and you see it rotates very well. And if I'm having trouble with my computer running a little bit slow due to these 3D files, I could actually down my resolution to half or even a third or a quarter to make just a rough it out to see where I want this to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this kind of right over his shoulder, right about there. Making sure I actually bring this on the layer underneath my main subject roto layer. It's looking pretty good. So I have my phone booth here and I'm gonna go through the same exact process using my abandoned house in the background. So now that I have my two 3D objects in place and my 3D camera tracker is completed, I can adjust the track point size to make it a little bit larger. I'll make a point right here where my phone booth is gonna be and I'll click and do create solid and camera. And then going back to my 3D camera tracker and selecting a point in the back here and clicking create solid for where my house is gonna be. Okay, so now taking that abandoned house and holding the parent pick whip with my shift held down, I'm gonna parent pick whip it to my house solid. And this is gonna maintain the same properties. I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit more and scale it up. And I'll do the same thing with my phone booth. I'll pick whip it and holding shift to parent it to my other solid. And I'll just have to readjust this once it does that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to start the compositing. So first you see here, the shot actually has a lot of depth of field. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose both of these GLB layers. And I'm gonna make sure that this little star icon is selected here, so it maintains the same camera movements as well. And I'm gonna to go to my 3D channel extract effect and bring this onto my pre-comp layer. So the 3D channel extract actually determines the 3D depth that's in your scene. So by playing around with the black point and the white point, it could actually figure out the depth of your scene. So I'll leave this like this for now. And I'm gonna hide this layer and I'll duplicate it and I'll delete the 3D channel extract effect on my top layer. And now on my pre-comp layer, I'm gonna drag the camera lens blur effect onto it. And the camera lens blur effect, under that effect in the blur map, I could actually select that depth map that I created. And you see it kind of picks up the blur map and you can invert it or adjust it and it can match the focus of your scene. So here you see the telephone booth is more in focus than the background layer, so that's good. I could also mess around with the blur focal distance and get that a little bit more fine tuned. I could also keyframe it so I could actually change it as my subject gets closer to the phone booth. I could even make this a little bit more out of focus using the main blur radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe this blur focal distance until I know the area around it comes into focus. Okay, that looks pretty good. So from here, I'm actually gonna do a quick roto of this tree here in front of the cabin just to give the effect that this cabin is actually in the background. So for this, I'm actually gonna duplicate my background layer I'll remove this 3D camera tracker effect because I don't need this. And I'll go back to my rotor brush layer and I'll just rotoscope this tree out really quickly. I will be super rough with this just because I'm gonna use the refine edge tool on my branches here just to have something in front of the cabin to create that depth. So as you can see here, the log cabin actually behind the tree all right, so once I have this layer kind of as a foreground in front of my house, I could go ahead and color correct the rest of the scene, but I'm not gonna put you through that grueling process. So here's my Lumetri effect that I came up with. 
and it kind of blends in everything, desaturates the reds a little bit, and here's the final result.